All right, let's take a look at the review for this week. We're gonna I'm gonna be working questions 17 through 32. Okay. Now let's take a look. 17 and 18. Find the interior angle sum. Interior, so it means inside, angle, so angles on the inside, sum basically adding. So find the interior angle sum for each polygon, round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. All right, so I remember I gave you guys a formula. I said the angles on the inside are going to add up to n minus 2 times 180. n is the numbered, the numbered of sides that the polygon has. Remember, I, I covered that with you guys a couple of days ago. I said n minus 2 times 180. All right, so let's count the sides. Let's see how many sides question number 17 has. So I'm going to count the sides. So there's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna say n is equal to eight. All right, there's eight sides. This is an octagon. So for me to find out how much all of them add up to, I'm gonna go six times 180. The six, because remember, n minus two. All right, there's eight sides, eight minus two. That's what the six is. So six times 180 happens to be 1,000. And 80. So all the angles on the inside add up to 1,080. All right, let's take a look at question number nine, or question number 18. So I want to see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. There's nine sides. So let me write n is equal to nine. So for me to find out how much all of the angles on the inside add up to, I'm going to go seven times 180. The 7, because 9 minus 2, that gives me 7. So 7 times 180, that happens to be 1,260. So all of the angles on the inside add up to 1,260. Now let's take a look at question number 19 and 20. Find a measure of one interior angle in each regular polygon. Now regular polygon means all the angles and all the sides are equal. So all the angles have the same measurement. All the sides have the same measurement. That's what regular polygon means. But I need to find out how much is one angle. Okay, round your answer to the nearest cent if necessary. So if I do get a decimal, round it to one decimal place. All right, so first of all, I would like to know how much all of the angles add up to. So I'm just gonna say, let's see, let me count how many sides there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm just going to write n is equal to eight. Now, for me to find out how much all of the angles add up to, I'm going to go six times 180. The six, because I went eight minus two. So six times 180 gives me 1,080. So this is how much all of the angles add up to. But here in my question, I'm asked, find only one of them. All right, not all of them, just one of them. So I know 1,080 is all of them. I'm going to divide it by eight. The reason why I divide it by eight, because there's eight of them. I counted the sides instead of counting the angles because it is easier to count a side in an angle, and it's the same number. Right? If you count eight sides, look at the angles. There's eight angles. That it's easier to count an, a side than an angle. All right, so now 1,080 divided by 8 gives me 135. So each of my angles is 135. All right, let's take a look at number 20. I'm going to count the sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's six sides, so that means there's six angles. If I want to know how much all of my angles add up to, I'm going to go 4 times 180. The 4, because I went 6 minus 2, so 4 times 180. 4 times 180 is 720. So all of my angles add up to 720. I'm interested in just one of them, so let me divide this by 6, because there's 6 of them. 720 divided by 6 is 120. Following the same idea, we're going to be able to solve 4x on questions 21 and 22. So looking at number 21, 
first of all, let me add everything. I know in addition, addition is basically I add, I combine all the like terms. So let me combine my x's first. 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8 plus 4. All right, I'm adding all of my x's, and that happens to be 25x. Then let me add those that don't have an x. So plus 2, so positive 2, plus 5, plus 10, plus 8, plus 15. That happens to be 40. So I'm going to write plus 40. So I'm adding everything, right? I combine all my like terms. Addition is basically combining like terms. And this is going to equal to, I need to know how much all of my angles add up to. There's five corners, right? There's five angles. I can count the side. There's five sides. So for me to know how much they all add up to, I'm going to go three times 180. There were five angles, right? Five minus two gives me the three. That's where the three comes from. So now I have 25x plus 40 is equal to 540. Let me separate them through the equal sign. I want the 25x by itself, so the plus 40. Let me move it over as a minus 40. So I have the 25x is equal to 500. To get x by itself, let me divide both sides by 25, and I get that x is equal to 20. Cool. So for x, x equals 20. Your homework, you don't have to type in x equals 20. Just type in the number. So just 20. Same idea. Let's follow for number 22. Let me combine the x's. So let me start by combining the x terms. So I'm looking at 5x plus 6x plus 4x plus 8x plus 7x. That happens to be 30x. Let me also combine those that don't have a letter. So 120 minus 6 plus 14 minus 8. That happens to be 120. And all of these are going to equal to something, all right? The angles on the inside. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six corners. Right? I have six angles. So for me to know how much all of them add up to, I'm going to go four times 180. So I have that 30x plus 120 equals 720. 4 times 180, 720. All right, let me separate them to the equal sign. I want the 30x by itself, so this plus 120. Let me cancel it out. But remember, I have to write it on the other side with opposite signs. So instead of plus, let me go minus 120. So I have that 30x is equal to 600. Let me divide both sides by 30. And I get that x is equal to 20. Nice. So that was a review of interior angles. Now, we also talk about exterior angles. So let's take a look at number 23 and 24. Find the measure of one exterior angle. one exterior angle in each regular polygon. Round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. All right, so when we say exterior angles, imagine I have my sides and I extend each of my sides. I'm gonna only extend a few, but if I was to extend all of them, I'm talking about the angle created outside. Like so I could, we could see all the way around. But that's the angle that I want us to find, the exterior angle. Now, because it says it's a regular polygon, all of my angles are the same. So first of all, let me find out how many sides do I have, because it's the same amount of angles. 
So I'm going to count the sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. There's 10 sides. Now, the exterior angles, it doesn't matter how many we have. They always add up to 360. Always. The exterior angles. All of the exterior angles combined is 360. So I'm just going to go 360. That's all of them. I'm going to divide this by 10 because I have 10 angles this time. 360 divided by 10 will give me that each angle is 36. Same thing for number 24. I count how many sides. There's four sides. All of the angles are 360 combined. So 360 is all of them combined. I'm going to divide this by four because there's four of them. 360 divided by four is 90. So each angle on the outside will be 90. You can see this. Yeah, it does look like 90. So yeah, it makes sense. Now, question number 25 and 26, following the same idea. Right here, we're solving for x. But if we can tell, these are the angles on the outside. So what I'm going to do, let me, let me add them all up. I know addition, again, like I did a few minutes ago, addition is let me combine my like terms. So when it comes to x, I see 3x plus 2x plus 2x plus 1x. So I'm going to call that 8x. Now, looking at the terms that don't have an x, I see 4 plus 15 minus 5. That happens to be 14. So plus 14. And this is equal to something, right? So equals, we're dealing with the angles on the outside. And remember, I said the angles on the outside, it doesn't matter how many we have. They always add up to 360. So there, 8x plus 14 equals 360. The rest is just algebra. Let me separate them through the equal sign. My plus 14, let me move it over as a minus 14. So I have 8x. Now, 360 minus 14 is 346. To get the x by itself, let me divide by 8. And I get that x is equal to 43.25. Now, I look at the instructions. The instructions just say solve for x. So I put in my decimal 43.25. If the instruction said rounded to the nearest tenth, I would have said 43.3. .3. So got to pay attention to the instructions. If it says rounded, rounded. If it doesn't say round, then you have to type in the whole number, 43.25. Okay. Now looking at number 26. Let me combine my like term. So it went, in terms of x, I only have one x. In terms of no x, I have 70 plus 60 plus 65 plus 40. That happens to be 235. And because I'm dealing with the angles on the outside, all of them combined equals 360. So I have x plus 235 equals 360. All right, let me separate it through the equal sign. To get the x by itself, the plus 235, I'm going to cancel it, but I'm going to move it to the other side as a minus 235. Don't forget to switch the sign. So I get x equals 360 minus 235 is 125. So x equals 125. All right, let's flip the page. Let's take a look at number 27. Now, Solve for x, each figure is a trapezoid. I mentioned before, I mentioned on our lectures yesterday that a trapezoid, two sides are parallel, the other two are not. So I have a figure like this. But one interesting part of a trapezoid is the two angles on the left have to add up to 180. The two angles on the right have to add up to 180. So that's what I have here. I see these two angles. They have to add up to 180. So I'm just going to add everything. 
for this moment, let me just write 17x minus 7 plus 85 equals 180. I added everything equals 180. All right, let me separate them through the equal sign. On the left side, I can combine those. When it comes to letters, I just have 17x. Now, negative 7 plus 85 happens to be 78. Positive 78. This is equal to 180. To get the x by itself, I want to get rid of the plus 78. So let me cancel it out as long as I write it as a minus 78. So I have that 17x is equal 180 minus 78 is 102. Let me divide both sides by 17. 102 divided by 17 happens to be 6. So x equals 6. Easy, beautiful. Now let's take a look at number 28. These two angles have to add up to 180. My instructions, again, were solve for x. Each figure is a trapezoid. So I'm just going to add everything. So I have 141 plus 4x plus 3 equals 180. When it comes to letters, I just have 4x. When it comes to just numbers, I see 141 plus 3, so that's 144, and this is equal to 180. I want to have the 4x by itself, so the plus 144, I'm going to cancel it, but I'm going to write it on the other side as a minus 144. So I have that 4x equals 36. 180 minus 144 is 36. Now to get the x by itself, let me divide both sides by 4. So x is equal to 9. Now we're going to move into an isosceles trapezoid. These two angles here have to add up to 180. I only see one of them. These two angles on the, on the left side have to add up to 180. Now I'm calling this isosceles trapezoid because of these measurements. All right, it's telling me that the side on the left is equal to the side on the right. So that means that the angles on the left are equal to the angles on the right. I'm going to use the one that is only a number, so 70. That is 70 degrees. So I'm going to say this other angle right here, it is 70 degrees as well. All right, this happens on isosceles trapezoid. Right, those two angles are equal. Okay, so now to solve for x, I'm going to use these two angles. All right, I'm just going to add everything equals 180. So I have 34x plus 8 plus 70. This is equal to 180. All right, on the left side, when it comes to letters, I just have 34x. When it comes to just numbers, 8 plus 70, that's 78. And all this is equal to 180. All right, the plus 78, let me move it over as a minus 78. So I have that 34x is equal to 102. To get x by itself, let me divide both sides by 34. So x happens to be 3. Nice. Same idea for number 30. These two angles on the right add up to 180, but I only have one of them. However, because it is an isosceles trapezoid, I'm going to say this angle U is 79 degrees. The reason why I know it's 79 is because they're the same angles as these on the left. So I'm just going to go 11x plus 24 plus 79 equals 180. Remember, they have to add up to 180. Okay, so on the left side, I'm going to separate them through the equal sign. When it comes to letters, I just have 11x. 
when it comes to numbers, 24 plus 79 happens to be 103. This is equal to 180. To get the 11x by itself, the one, plus 103, I'm going to bring it to the other side as a minus 103. So I get that 11x equals 77. 180 minus 103, 77. Now to get the x by itself, let me divide by 11 on both sides. So I get x is equal to 7. All right, my last two questions for today are going to be about kites. One interesting thing that I know about kites, if I stand it up, these two sides are equal, these bottom sides are equal, and I know these two angles are equal. Here I'm asking you guys to find, so solve for the indicated measurement, the following are kites. So I'm asking what's the measurement of angle Z? That's this angle. For right now, let me call it X. I don't know what is it. Interesting though, is that I know this other angle, it's also X, because it's the same thing. Okay, so now I'm, I have all four angles of a kite. I'm just gonna add them all up. X plus X plus 81 plus 41 equals. All right, so I have the angles on the inside. I remember at the beginning of today's lecture, interior angle sum of a polygon, right? In order for me to know how much they all add up to, I'm just gonna write in the inside N is equal to four because there's four corners, there's four sides. So for me to know how much they all add up to, I'm gonna go two times 180. All right, so let me separate this here. When it comes to letters on the left side, 1x plus 1x, it's 2x. 81 plus 41, that's 122 plus 122. This is equal to 2 times 180 is 360. Okay, so now the plus 122, let me move it over as a minus. 122. So I have that 2x equals 360 minus 122. It is equal to 238. Let me divide both sides by 2. x equals 238 divided by 2 is 119. So that's the angle that I was looking for. I know I called it X because I didn't know what it was, but now I know it's 119. Okay. Let's take a look at question number 32. Same idea here. Okay, so I have the measurement of angle C is 84. So this is 84. The measurement of angle D is 116. Before I continue, I know F is 116 because those two angles are equal. Find the measurement of angle E. Okay, I don't know what angle E is, so let me call it X for right now. All right, so let me add everything. X plus 84 plus 116 plus 116, and all of this is going to equal to 2 times 180. All right, the left side, when it comes to letters, there's just 1X. When it comes to numbers, I have 84 plus 116 plus 116. So that's 316. And this is equal to 360. The plus 316, let me move it over as a minus 316. So X is equal to 360 minus 316 is 44. Some of your question might also deal with diagonals. Remember, we covered those. So if you need to go back and, and see my previous lecture, go for it. So this is what we did today, right there. 